Hey everybody, welcome to the show. I'm John Compton. Today we're talking about Norcor and specifically the juvenile detention facility. And with me is manager uh, Jeff Justison, and he's here to talk about uh, some of the history of how the facility came into existence as well as uh, its main purpose. So, Jeff, thanks for coming on. It's good to see you. Nice to see you, John. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about um, it's since it's a juvenile detention center, it's obviously 18 and younger. How, how young? Um, well, in Oregon, um, if they're under 12, you have to have a, ju a judge's written order for a youth to come into the facility. Um, primarily, it's 12 to 18 year olds. Um, after they turn 18, they would move on to the adult facility. Um, we've had kids under the age of 12. It's rare, um, but it happens from time to time. Yeah, okay. What are, like, what's the goal of the facility? Is it, um, you know, because you think of, you know, adults that go to prison or to jail, you know, it's, it's obviously, there's a, it's, it's a consequence, it's a punishment in a sense. Um, is that sort of how the facility for the youth is ran or is it more of just trying to get young folks maybe back on track? Well, we're really a short-term holding facility. Um, at the county level, detention facilities are designed um, primarily for two things. One is to protect the community and two is to assure that the youth will appear in front of a judge when their court appearance is scheduled. And um, so we do that um, in, in our facility. Um, kids that commit crimes, um, not all crimes, but some crimes will come into the facility and um, the juvenile department that has jurisdiction over the youth, uh, typically each county has its own juvenile department, will um, look at the youth's history, talk to the parents, find out as much as they can about the youth, and they'll make a decision um, about recommending to the judge whether that youth stay in detention pending further court hearing or whether they're released. All right. And that um, final decision, um, once they go to court, the final decision's up to the judge, but the juvenile department's really uh, highly involved in um, making a recommendation to the court. So what are some of these people, uh, these young people coming in for? Like what, what sorts of offenses do you guys usually see? Well, by statute in Oregon, um, if, if you don't have anything else going on um, in your life, if you're not on probation um, already for something, um, you have to commit certain crimes before you can you go into a juvenile detention facility. Um, if you, and I, you or I um, got caught shoplifting at Fred Meyer, um, we would likely go to jail. As adults, we would go to jail. Um, we would either make bail or wait until the judge releases us. Um, but with juveniles, um, it, it's not automatic that that happens. Um, they have to commit certain crimes, um, and it's not even automatic if once they commit that certain crime that they're going to go to detention. The juvenile department makes a decision um, initially, and if they decide that they go to detention, um, then they're there pending the court process. Sometimes they release them to their parents pending the court process. Okay. And it, so it's never more than 30 days that they would stay there? Um, sometimes it is. If we have somebody that's committed a serious crime, um, they might be there for several months uh, uh, while their trial is pending. Um, we've had, I, I think the longest that someone's been there um, since th that I'm aware of is about 13 or 14 months, um, had committed a fairly serious crime and um, the trial kept getting reset because both the district attorney and the, and the youth's attorney wanted to make sure they had all the facts and everything in place before they, uh, n before they went to trial. Okay. Um, but really the average stay is, is shorter, kind of a three to five day type of thing. Um, the youth will come in, they'll appear in court, the juvenile department will make a release plan to assure that the community's safe and assure that, um, that they'll be back in court when they're supposed to go to court, and then, um, and then they'll get released. Um, the other, it, it's not just based on the crime though, sometimes kids are on probation for a crime and they'll violate terms of their probation. And, um, and, and those youth might come in, um, if they violated probation, they might come in while the juvenile department re-examines whether the conditions that they're um, supposed to be following are appropriate and, and make a decision about um, whether they stay there uh, pending court too. Okay, so if somebody's on probation, obviously they would have had to have been in Norcor or another 
correction facility at some point, right? Um, well, a lot of them have been, uh, but not all of them. For example, um, if a youth that has never been in trouble before um, uh, commits a theft in the second degree, um, uh, which is a class A misdemeanor, um, they might not come to Norcor when they commit that initial crime. They'll go to, through the court process. Um, the judge will place them on probation. They'll have a list of probation rules they have to follow. And then if they violate those probation rules, then they might come into Norcor. So sometimes we get somebody that's violated a probation that hasn't been into Norcor before. Okay. Now, how does this follow them through the rest of their lives, or does it sort of just get wiped off after they turn 18? Um, it doesn't automatically get um, wiped off once they turn 18. Um, there's certain crimes that can be expunged. There's certain crimes that can't be expunged. Um, some of them, um, a youth can apply to have their record expunged um, after a certain period of time. Again, it depends on the crime um, and it depends on their age, uh, but statute lines out what, uh, how, how long that can stay on the record. Okay. And then before we go to commercial, I wanted to ask you about um, the detention risk assessment instrument. And this is part of the booking or the intake, right? And what exactly is that? Um, the detention risk assessment instrument is something that um, uh, some counties use um, to determine which youth actually come into de um, the detention facility after a crime. And um, different agencies across the United States use it. Um, and locally, Wasco County is utilizing that now. And basically what it does, it um, gives the youth a score. And if the score um, reaches a certain level, they go to detention. If the score doesn't reach a certain level, then they're released. Um, so it takes into consideration the crime that they've committed, um, a little bit about their history, um, uh, if they are someone that's safe to, uh, for them to be released to, whether they're in school or have a job, all of those things. And um, so what happens with that is the police will call um, NORCOR if they have somebody in custody in Wasco County. And Wasco County, um, or somebody at NORCOR will put all of the information that we have at the time into that risk assessment instrument and a score will come up. And then we'll call the juvenile department director from Wasco County Youth Services and say, we have this youth Here's their risk assessment instrument score. Um, it indicates um, de to detain them, or it indicates that uh, they should be released. And then, um, and then the director will give us um, authority to hold them or authority to release them. Okay. Well, definitely uh, quite a process there. So you guys don't go anywhere. We'll be right back.